In October 2023, I flew from Cape Town to the UK with two missions. Mission one was to buy a Paddington Bear rattle for my little boy, Ollie. Mission two was to give a talk about landing pages at the Webflow Conf London. Mission one was a slam dunk and Paddington quickly became my little dude's favorite rattling bear. Mission two was also a huge success and I got to meet the super friendly Webflow team and hung out with so many legends from their core community. We don't have a video of my talk, but I've used the captured audio to script and reenact my session along with the exact same slides. I hope it helps you strengthen your next landing page build. Let's begin. So a landing page is where you land up after your marketing efforts. LS Graphics creates brilliant digital goods. This is a fictitious Instagram ad saying swipe up to enhance your presentations with our clay mockups. When you swipe up, you don't go to the LS Graphics homepage, you go to their Webflow built clay mockups landing page. And it's worth noting that a good landing page has just one objective. Objectives are things like sign up at a SaaS, subscribe to our newsletter, and in their case, it's download. So in their landing page header, they have a simple download link. Below the hero graphics, download. In their pricing, again, one objective, download. Cambridge-based doctor turned YouTuber Ali Abdul created a new service called Hey Friends after identifying the struggles with production in YouTube. When he announced the service in his beautiful Webflow built landing page, his one objective was to join the waitlist. So see join the waitlist below the hero and join the waitlist in the pricing table. What he did not say was buy my ebook, subscribe to my YouTube channel or take my YouTuber Academy. See the beauty of a landing page is the single canvas to persuade someone to act. And when someone acts and they align with that single objective you set, that's what we call a conversion. And if you have too many objectives in a landing page, the copy starts competing against each other. Your message is diluted, you have too many calls to action and your conversions naturally would drop. Okay, so how do we create strong landing pages that convert? I've got a terrible answer for you. It all depends. What we need to do is build foundations with context. You cannot optimize without understanding. So. Who is your demographic? What problem do they have? And how does your offering solve this problem? So here's an example. Demographic, new moms with toddlers growing up, the toddlers are getting heavy. Problem, moms are getting a sore lower back. Solution, ergonomic baby carrier. Another example, middle-aged woman working in corporate London. Problem, stressed out by the bustle, burnt out. Solution, a reset in Greece. So now we need to transport ourselves into the shoes of the landing page visitor and ask yourself, what would they need to see and read to be persuaded to act? Again, what would the corporate working woman in London need to see and read to be persuaded to act in the landing page? What doubts does she have? What concerns could she have? And when you actually start writing this down on a piece of paper, it really starts to surface the content we need. And remember, cross check every bit of content and ask yourself, does it align with a single objective you set for the landing page? So let's talk about persuasion. I'm gonna fire through these. Each one, we could probably speak an hour, but there are essentially three ways to persuade someone. You can tell them, that's through your intro copy, like, hey, this is the best. Or secondly, you can get others to try to tell them. This is your social proof, this is your testimonials, this is your rating saying, I really enjoyed this. This is definitely stronger than just telling them. And thirdly, and best of all, is trying to show them. You can show them through delightful visuals, in-page demos, how it works, and explainer videos. Let's step aside quick to screenshot productivity tool, CleanshotX. They start off by just telling us, capture your Mac screen like a pro. But then they get someone else to tell you. And that person says, CleanShot is a super powerful replacement. It works exactly how I need it to. Great definitely a little stronger than you just telling them. And thirdly, they have an explainer video. And this explainer video answers a few doubts that you could potentially have when you arrive at the page. You're wondering what happens after a screenshot is taken. And in the video, it shows just how it snaps the image in the quarter, corner and makes it editable. It's beautiful, it's highly edited, it's a good reference. And what they also did is they included all three ways to persuade above the fold. 
Super clean, super simple. So sidestepping to One Page Love, a website I started back in 2008. I've reviewed over 8,000 landing pages and you'll be blown away with what excited founders do when they launch their products. They're so proud of their offering and want to include as many testimonials as possible. But they all sort of say the same thing. This is awesome. And they're also so deep in the founder journey that they're not truly understanding what it's like to step into a first time visitor's shoes and they start using fancy words. What no one wants is a wordy, wafty intro. They don't want 20 testimonials that say the same thing. And they don't want an unedited walkthrough by a founder that's super slow and boring. What they want is to be persuaded with less, not more. We wanna handpick those testimonials. We want the copy to be concise. We want your demos to be highly edited. Okay, so now you're thinking, all very well, Rob. I've got the copy, I've got the testimonials. But what do I say? Which testimonials do I use? And how do I show them? Cool, let's break it down with a little bit more context. So telling them is naturally through copywriting. And I'll admit, I'm by far no expert in copywriting. It is hectic. But I try to use these three pillars to help guide me. And again, all the examples I'm using are oversimplified, but they help me with the understanding. So we talk about transformation. This is the end. We talk about keeping it concise, so nothing fancy. And then we talk about tailoring the copy to make it feel nuanced. So let's start by talking about transformation. This really applies to every single step of persuading someone. Think of it at the end, think of the results. It's who they become, what they will be able to do. Where will you take them? So some examples, it's not about becoming a medic or learning Notion or mastering SEO or flying to London. Your thinking needs to go to save someone's life, be more productive, increase organic traffic, or see the Big Ben. It's about the results, it's about the end. So this next one is a very oversimplified example, but it's not about the actual Colgate toothpaste. And it's not about owning a lot of toothpaste. It's about the power of a smile. Try to remember that example to help you guide you. So a lot of you guys probably consumed some landing page content in the past and someone told you it has to relate to a user's problem and they identify it when they arrive for the first time. But I challenge it. I don't wanna be reminded that my teeth are yellow. And then what happens at this point is that I'm on a discovery and I'm still having a conversation with a page and then I'm yet to be convinced. I wanna arrive on a landing page where there is a happy grin with a long side text saying, smile with confidence again. So you've already taken us to the end. There's less to read, there's less to discover. And now I'm asking, okay, great, that's what I want. Where can I pay? I'm already feeling emotionally charged. Okay, so here's a little side story from back home to help teach you about tailored and concise copywriting. Do you know what an epaulette is? An epaulette is this fancy frilly gold thing that guards wear. Now, I try to big myself up online and I say, hey, I'm Rob, I surf, I build websites, I listen to punk rock. But the truth is I'm actually an ultra nerd and I love bird watching. I'm trying to increase my lifeless counts. I go on trips when I get a notification that a funny bird is in a puddle of water just outside Cape Town, I'll drive there. And what I know that the majority of you don't is that at a certain time of year, our southern double collared sunbird starts its breeding plumage. And they now have something growing out their shoulders and these shiny feathers are called epaulets. So now step into my shoes and imagine I was on the hunt to buy some binoculars and I landed on this landing page that said Nikon Monarchs, the M5s at 8x42s, they're cheap. Or I landed on this tailored landing page, likely from an Instagram ad or filtered me from a Facebook group. And I landed on this landing page that said, experience detailed epaulets. Which one is gonna make me feel like I'm closer to the end? This is what I want. I want those crispy epaulets in my binoculars. Okay, so back to Ali Abdul for a sec. His landing page doesn't say, tired of spending nights editing YouTube videos. He takes you to the end. Unlock effortless YouTube growth with your own world-class content team. This is exactly what his Webflow landing page says. And then back to our other example, it's not like, is your back cooked from your big baby? It's step out into the world again. It's about the end. Okay, so whizzing through this next bit, there's a lot of content about testimonials and the types of social proof. 
What I want you to understand is that a good testimonial is not a generic testimonial. It's not a testimonial that says, oh, it's awesome. A good testimonial highlights a feature or answers a doubt your potential visitor could have. And even better is if it somehow shows transformation. So instead of saying, oh, Janelle's newsletter operating system is awesome. It says, Janelle's newsletter operating system helped me grow my list and pick up a sponsor. So we're showing transformation that the product caused. And what you have in front of you is probably 20 testimonials, but three of them will highlight a feature like this one, mentioning there is an interactive checklist bundled in the product. So another good tip when acknowledging is people are skimming and some testimonials are sometimes long, is try to bold the main takeaways within the testimonial text. As you can see in the top row, MDS has put together a valuable program, most actionable resource because your visitor is going through the page and if you can highlight the best nuggets within your testimonials, that's how you really make them shine. And lastly, the strongest of them all is showing them. This is the one I really wanna encourage and this is the one I want you to invest in, spend the money. So there are many examples, explainer videos, free SaaS tiers, screenshots, photography, and how it works sections. Let's run through a few quick. Why not show them within a device? Make them feel they are just that bit closer to the end product. So if you're promoting a meditation app, for example, you can either tell them, hey, this will make you feel calm, or you can get other people in the page to tell them, hey, this made me feel calm. Or you can show them by putting a screenshot of the app in a central device and making it feel more real. You see that call to action to the right? I'm one click away from experiencing the central displayed object. So here's a productivity timer. It's a Mac app and it's illustrated within a Mac menu bar. So your concern at this point could maybe be, is it easy to switch between tasks and quickly resume? And as you can see here, there's play buttons. You're showing them exactly how it looks and how much real estate it takes up at the top of your screen. Check out this note taking app. One of the unique selling points is that you can easily take notes on the go on a phone. So they've shown exactly how the responsive design looks and how you could switch between dates at the top. Okay, let's talk about skeuomorphism. Skeuomorphism is a graphic design term where digital design sort of mimics the real world counterpart. And this really makes you feel like you're experiencing this digital product in a more tangible way. So this is my landing page hot tips ebook. I bought the skeuomorphic book mockup for five bucks. Applied cover graphics, drop shadow, tilted it slightly, and it feels like it's a book that could be sitting on a table. You're selling a print. Why not put it in a frame? Add a drop shadow, put a plant in the foreground. So someone arrives at your landing page considering this print, but asks, what will it really look like? You're taking them closer to the end. This is a certificate for an online course. Once you scroll to the bottom of the Webflow landing page, it shows you that this is the exact certificate you could get if you unlock the access. You're making them feel that they are that much closer to the achievement. And then the strongest of them all and the most difficult to implement is an in-page demo and get your visitor interacting with the product within your landing page. I could show you 50 examples of clever in-page demos. This is honestly what gets me up in the morning. And whenever I see a one-pager that shows me an in-page demo, I get so excited. Here is one of my favorite examples where the unique selling point of this time zone converter is that you can drag the app interface left or right and it starts changing the times of the cities that are important to you. So you arrive at this landing page, but learn it's a paid for product. You're thinking, hmm, I'm not too sure, but notice a drag me call out within the landing page. And as soon as you start dragging the timeline, the world map in the background starts moving and the numbers start changing. Exactly how the app would function. What a first impression. Okay, ending things off. If there is one thing I want you to take home from this talk is that there's a massive problem online with people skimming content, attention spans are turning to dust, and if there's one tactic you can implement in your landing page that can really get results and fast, it's visual transformation. Think of a before and after, but positioned alongside each other. Let's go back to the teeth example. Not my favorite, but an easy one to teach for a lesson. Sure, we can have yellow teeth, white teeth, but what we want to do at this point is add a little bit more reference for how long it will take. Think of learning about a gym app, and if they tell you it just takes 15 minutes a day, this makes it a lot more authentic. This makes it seem like it's actually achievable and must do the work. 
And let's take this thing full circle. Here we have blurry epaulets alongside crispy epaulets. Okay, let's do a quick recap from the top. We wanna to start off by defining our one objective. Now we ask ourselves, and we write it down on a piece of paper, seriously, don't do it digitally, put it on a piece of paper. Who is your demographic? What problem do they have? And how does your offering solve it? Then we ask ourselves, what would the landing page visitor need to see and read to be persuaded to act? What doubts and concerns do they have? This will surface the content we need. Now it's time to convince them. So how do you convince them? You tell them. You tell them with copywriting. The copywriting focuses on transformation. It keeps it concise. It's tailored. We've got nuances to make it feel like this product was built for them. Then we integrate hand-picked social proof that highlights features and answers doubts. And then thirdly, is we show them. We show them with delightful visuals to get them excited. We show them with in-page demos, explainer videos, and how it works. We invest in showing them. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed my reenacted Webflow Conf London talk. By tackling the items I mentioned, I can assure you that they'll help strengthen your landing pages and increase those conversions. Check out showthem.com for more content like this. Thanks Webflow for having me and I hope to see you all at the next Webflow Conf event. Happy building.